you have your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy 6. I want to talk to you today about the importance of God's holy word. I cannot tell you, I cannot express in words how important the word of God is to a growing Christian. Now you can be a Christian, and, and again, I know early in my life and early in my, you know, uh, you know, when I was younger, I, I never did really take the Word of God seriously. But I'm telling you, uh, the Word of God is so important to a growing Christian. I want to give you three things, three things if you have a bulletin and want to follow along and take notes about the importance of God's Word. Number one, God's Word teaches us. Teaches us. Folks, doesn't matter what age you are. Doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. If you will pick up the Word of God, if you will read the Word of God, He will teach you something different or r remind you of something that is important. Number two, God's Word encourages us. Man, we all need encouragement, don't we? I mean, the world in which we live in, and you turn on the news and it's so discouraging. But man, you can pick up your Word of God and you can tune out of the television and the radio and all the, the media frenzy that we have. And you can get alone with God as Amy has sung and learn more. And the Word of God encourages us. Number three, the Word guides us. Folks, we haven't arrived spiritually. There's still roads we must walk down. There are still things out in front of us that we didn't have any idea they were coming. And I'm telling you, many times... Uh, uh, it, it, it's so important that when you pick up the Word of God, you understand that it guides us, it leads us, it shows us God's way, it gives us hope in these times of trouble. So with these three things in mind, Deuteronomy chapter 6. You know the word Deuteronomy means the second law or repetition of the law. We understand the first law was given to Moses uh, in Exodus 20. And Moses is reviewing the original law given at Mount Sinai and, apply, and applying it to the children of Israel and life in Canaan. God was giving his people a second chance and did not want to see them fail like the fathers before then. It has been said that those who do not remember the past are likely to repeat it. In Deuteronomy 6, Moses was telling the children of Israel how important the word of God is and how they needed to apply God's Word in their lives. Folks, if all we do is read it, that is not enough. We'd we need to study it. We need to read it. We need to study it. We need to memorize it. And we need to apply it to our lives. He, you read things for application. Let's look at this spiritual challenge from one of the greatest leaders of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6.1, now this is the commandment, and we know what commandments are. It's not an option, okay? When you go into the military, you don't wake up when you want to wake up. You don't go where you want to go. You, you, when you sign up, you will be commanded the rest of your time of service. Somebody will be telling you what to do. And folks, I am telling you, God needs to tell us what to do. He is uh, you know, you know the ultimate soldier. He is the ultimate king, all right? He is the general, all right? He is the word of God. Now, this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you. And folks, we need to learn. Notice twice he uses the word command. We need to know the word of God that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear our God. And fear means reverential fear. Fear means respect for God. I tell you, sometimes children will not take the Word of God seriously, even carrying the Bible, or I hate it when somebody, a kid throws the Bible down on the ground. Okay, it takes all of my being, not to, you know, not my parenthood and my grandparenthood to kick in. I'm the preacher. I need to be nice about it. Okay, we need to respect the word of God and keep all his statutes and commandments, which I commanded you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life and that your days may be 
prolonged. Oh, folks, I cannot tell you how much instruction is in the Word of God. I cannot tell you how much information is in the Word of God. I cannot express to you how important doctrine is. We need to know what God's Word says. It is vital to our Christian growth. Hold your finger there and turn to 2 Timothy 3 with me. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14. The Bible says, uh, but you must continue. Notice the word must. Okay, that's not an option. You must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of and knowing whom you have learned them. Folks, we learn from God. This is God's love letter to us. This is God's instructions to us. We have learned that. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Folks, we have to know the word of God. To be saved, you have had to hear the word of God. There's two things that make salvation happen. One is the word of God. Somebody shared with you precious scripture. And then the Holy Spirit pricked your heart and convicted you of sin. That's how you were saved. And these t I love the Gideon testimonies. I got the book that y'all had of the testimonies that are going on. And I'm telling you, I just pick those up every now and then to see how God works through His Word. His Word. And it says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Folks, there are people that don't believe that the Bible is real. There are people that will just say, hey, I don't want to hear it. But what they are missing is God's holy word to mankind. What they are missing is the very thing that can save them. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Folks, that's who we are. We are... We, we, we are Southern Baptists. We believe the Bible. We, we have the Baptist faith and message. And every line that's in there, you can see, is backed up by the Word of God for reproof, for correction. We all need corrected every once in a while, folks. Some of us just get too big for our pants, as my grandma used to say. We need to go to the woodshed and let God straighten us out. For instruction in righteousness. That'd be like going to school and not having a textbook, folks. That textbook is so important. So important. And, and the Word of God is our textbook. That the man of God may be complete. He's talking about mature. He's talking about growing. He's talking about knowing. He's talking about sharing the Word of God. I am telling you, I cannot put in words how important the Word of God is to you, that He may be complete, matured, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh, folks, the Word of God is a good work. And when we apply the Word of God to, to our lives, we show people who God is and what God can do for you. Folks, God changed you. God changed me through the Word. Psalms 119, 60. Psalms 119, the entirety. I like that word. Every word in the Bible is important. The entirety of your word is truth. It is truth. It is yes. It is amen. Hey, there's some people that don't like the truth, but Jesus himself said the truth will set you free, folks. You can be free of sin. And every one of, of your righteous judgments endures forever. Listen, folks. Somebody may eventually take our Bibles from us, but they cannot take the Bible from our hearts and from our heads. That's why it's going to be important, folks, in these last days to memorize the Word of God. We need to memorize it. And then Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, 
Joshua 1, verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous. And we know Joshua is leading the children of Israel into the promised land. We know that Moses had died and Joshua had taken over. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. He's saying don't stray from the Word of God. Revelations 22 tells us not to add to the Word of God or take away from the Word of God. It tells and will pronounce judgment on those who do that. Folks, it was written, it's the same. I know there's different translations, but the Word of God is canonized. It was handpicked by God. He handpicked the men that wrote it and the prophets and the people that wrote that. And it doesn't need any, you know, any changes in it. The Word of God is perfect. Look at verse 8. And this, and this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate on it day and night. And we're going to, just in a few minutes, go to Psalms 1. So two times in the Word of God, it tells us to meditate on it day and night. What does it mean, folks? I've told you this. And it's so important. You need to start your day in the Word of God, and you need to end your day in the Word of God. Say, so Mike, why is that? Because of everything else in between. All right, man, we got Satan throwing them darts at us. We got people being mean to us. We got people saying ugly things to us. And the Word of God will prepare you for the day, and, and the Word of God at the end will be prepare you for a good night's sleep. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. That's twice we've seen prosper in success to those who make Bible reading a priority in their life. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I don't care what, wherever you go, folks, the Word of God can be with you. It can be hidden in your heart. The Word of God can teach you. The Word of God can sustain you. The Word of God can be your shield. There are so many good things about God's Holy Word, and God's Word teaches us. Number two, God's Word encourages us. God word, God's Word encourages us. Look back in our text. Look, look at the next verse. Look at verse 3. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God your Father has promised you. Folks, there are so many promises in the Word of God. You know what one of the promises are? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Listen to me. You're never alone. He knows where you're at. He knows what's going on. And the way we connect with God is through His Word. Through His Word. A land flowing with milk and honey. And folks, milk was a stable back then. Honey was a staple back then. It was a necessity. And... and even today, man, I like milk and honey today, all right? It's good for you. It'll make you healthy. Verse 4, hear, O Israel, the Lord God is, Lord God, our God, excuse me, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. See, there are people that'll tell you there's all kinds of gods out there, and there are, but the difference is big G and little g. Big G is Jehovah God of this Bible. There's only one of him, folks. He is reigning. He is ruling. Nothing catches him by surprise. We should not fear. Joshua said, folks, we should be able to take fear out of our vocabulary if we are connected with God and we're connected with his word. Verse 5, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Oh, folks, his promises are true. And even 
Jesus later on. When you look at this, you think, I've heard that before, folks. All right? He, that, that's in Matthew uh, chapter 22 also. It's there. And Jesus is quoting this very verse. So what does it mean? It's talking about your relationship with God. One way to get closer to God is through His Word. And you want to read a good author? Let me tell you a good author, God. <laughs> you want to read a good book? The biggest seller ever, ever in the history of mankind is the Word of God, the Bible. And I don't even know how many Bibles y'all have given out over history, but I mean, it millions if over 2 billion given out folks i am telling you we need to give these to our children as birthday presents we need to get uh, translations that people understand orville biddle who man I, I still miss orville i really do every time we'd go out and visit in his pocket was a gideon new testament and every time we go out, we would pray together, and Orville would say, man, I hope I give this Bible away today. Folks, we need to give away the Word of God. We need to give it away, and we can do that. Matter of fact, Psalms 119.11. Psalm 119.11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I, I may not sin against you. I just thought of this. Orville had it close to his heart. Folks, the Word of God needs to be close to our heart. And listen to me. The closer you get to God in the Bible, the further you will get away from sin. It helps us. It leads us. It guides us. It teaches us. It encourages us. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1. Go with me to Psalm 1. The Bible said, and this is Psalm 1.1, blessed is the man. Blessed means happy. Man, don't you want to be happy? I want to be happy. All right? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. And folks, it's, it's just talking about sinners. Yes, we need to talk to sinners. Yes, we need to witness to sinners. But we do not need to let them influence us. And having the Word of God hidden in our heart helps that. All right? Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You know what we delight in? We delight in a lot of things. Okay? Some of you, like me, delight in Krispy Kreme donuts. When the red light's on. If a red light's on and I go through Oklahoma City, my car is stopping, okay? We delight in that. Some of us delight in coffee. I don't even want to talk to you before you have your coffee. Are you with me now? What if we turned that and was delighted in the Word of God like we are in other things? You know what delights me? And it's too hot to do it right now, to be honest with you. Jumping on my motorcycle and taking off. I delight in that. But the Word of God, folks, we start the day in the day. And in His law does He meditate day and night. There it is again. And He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever He does, prosper. Have you noticed a thread through every scripture that we have read? You want to prosper? Get in the Word. You want to rise above your circumstances? Get in the Word. You want to make your marriage stronger? Get in the Word. You want to isolate sin from you and temptation from you? I'm not saying it won't happen, but get in the the Word, the Word of God encourages us. The Word of God is our lifeline. And the last thing, the last thing, the Word of God, the Word of God guides us. The Word of God guides us. 
Look back in our text. Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. And these words which I command you today shall be, shall be in your heart. Folks, there's a difference of having the Word of God in your mind and having the Word of God in your heart. Anyone can memorize Scripture. I mean, if you work at it long enough, but it's not just having it in your head, it's having it in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. Oh, folks, we need to uh, teach our children the Word of God. It's so important. Our children's ministry is so important. Our youth ministry is so important. And they're being bombarded by things. And we need to have family devotions. If you're not having family devotions, husband and wives need to have devotions together. And what I suggest with couples is, in the morning, do your own Bible study. But at night, do your Bible study together. That keeps you close to one another and close to God. And she'll talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. It's saying, always having the Word of God in your heart and in your mind. And you shall bind them. And that's what I love about music, folks. A lot of music, they just take verses, and they're singing verses. Every hymn in our Baptist hymnal has a verse at the top. We need to be singing these hymnals. We need to be singing these things. We need the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the music of God in our lives. And you shall bind them as a sign into your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gate. Oh, folks, it's so important that we have reminders of the Word of God everywhere. When you first walk in the front door of my house, to the right is a wall. And on that wall, the first thing you see when you walk into my house is, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Folks, you need to memorize this scripture. When you're witnessing and you're in a witnessing situation, I understand you can have the Word of God there. I understand there's the four spiritual law. Any way you do that, but you need to have words in the Word ready so when someone comes at you with something, man, you can just spit those words out. I can't tell you how important it is to memorize the Word of God in your heart. Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119, 105 says, Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Folks, we live in a dark world. Our world is dark, and the Word of God lights our way. Proverbs 22.6, parents, listen to me, parents, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Oh, folks, we all have children. We have grandchildren, and we need to guide them. Some of them stray. And I thank God for the Word that our children and our grandchildren learned early in Sunday school and early in worship. And they may went through a hard time when they were 14 to 20 years old, but they have come back to the church and they have come back to God because of the Word of God. Then Isaiah 48, Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withers. <laughs> we know about that, huh? I told you a couple of months ago to quit praying for rain. Start praying for rain again, will you? The grass withers. The flower fades. See, flowers don't last year round. I know if you're inside, I understand. If you, I understand all that. But I'm telling you, the grass withers. The fire fades. Flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Well, there's not a whole lot of things that stand forever, folks. One is you're not going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. And I pray as we close that you know the Lord Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you don't, the greatest decision you can make is to invite Jesus Christ into your life. The Roman road, the Roman road is so important, folks. Memorize it. Have it marked in your Bible. Share the Word of God with others. Father, thank You. Thank You for Your Word. God, I thank You that many, 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 many people here have read the Word of God or someone has shared the Word of God with them. I thank You that they know You. And God, I pray that they would understand how important the Word of God is. God, if they have gotten slack in the reading, God, we all have 24 hours in a day. And God, we need to block out 15 to 20 minutes, morning and night, to get back in the Word. It's so important. We read the newspaper. We read the Internet. We read books. And there's nothing wrong with that. But God, we shouldn't lay down your word. God, I pray that we would again fall in love with the word. I pray that we would apply the word to our lives. It changes lives. It was the greatest book ever written. It is the greatest. So God, I pray that you'd make it a part of our lives again. God, if there's those here that need to come for baptism or even church membership, God, I pray that you would just speak to them right now. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you for the reminder of how important your word is this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rahel Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.